Finch, and last month I had the pleasure of embarking on an incredible 17-day journey through Greece. Over the duration of the trip, I hit seven cities and five islands. We started in Athens and made our way down to Crete, up to Santorini, Eos, Paros, and Mykonos, before returning back to Athens. Greece is a beautiful country in southeastern Europe, known for its stunning cliffside cityscapes, beautiful blue beaches, and luxurious party resorts. Often called the cradle of Western civilization, Greece is rich with history and culture that you won't get from a textbook alone. I booked this trip through EF College Break, an organized trip company known for their low prices, hand-picked accommodations, and experienced team of travel experts. Now don't let the name fool you, EF College Break is the perfect way to go when booking travel for anyone ages 18 to 28. Though I had toured throughout most of Europe already, I had never been to Greece or on a group tour, so when they offered to send me on their 17-day Ultimate Greek Islands tour, I could not say no. Before I get into the specifics regarding our itinerary, some packing tips, and my overall review of the trip, my favorite part of booking through EF College Break was how organized and stress-free the trip was. Not only is their website aesthetically pleasing and extremely easy to navigate through, but they take the time to set you up with a personal trip consultant who will walk you through any questions and concerns you may have before even booking. You can also call them anytime. For those of you considering booking, remember to use my code ADRIAN100 for $100 off. I'll link all the info below and feel free to write any questions and concerns in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all of them. My biggest concern with booking an organized tour was that I would be exhausted and wouldn't have any downtime to get work done or just relax. However, that wasn't the case at all. Though our itinerary was jam-packed with excursions, sightseeing, and plenty of things to do, we were given a lot of downtime as well as optional activities that we could choose to opt out of if we were feeling too tired or wanted free time to explore the city ourselves. Your trip will consist of one tour director. This person arranges everything from hotels to transportation, and they lead the group daily. They're essentially your trip superhero. Adam, we love you! Yeah. My tour director slash group dad, older brother as he'd like to correct me, was Adam Gerard. I'm gonna miss him so much! He was so great because he not only had immense knowledge of the country, but he truly seemed to enjoy every day of his job. Though our group had 30 people, he personally walked me to the pharmacy in Santorini when I got sick and made sure to be there for everyone, answering questions 24-7. I was also lucky to have another awesome EF team member on the trip, Jesse. He too loves his job and we all got along so well. Let's get into the itinerary. This particular trip is 15 days long, but you have to add two days to account for traveling. Everyone in the group flew into Athens on the same day and met up for our welcome dinner that night. Everyone in our group seemed so nice and I was surprised to see how many people had been traveling alone. By the end of the trip, I understood why. Some of the people you meet on these trips could end up being your lifelong best friends. The sightseeing and history in Athens was incredible, and getting around via the underground metro was fairly easy to get a grasp on. Athens retains landmarks including the 5th century BC Acropolis, which holds the Parthenon Temple, and also our hotel was the tallest building in Athens. How funny is that? After Athens, we set sail on an overnight ferry for Crete. Majority of our travel on this trip was via coach, bus, and ferry. At first, I was worried about getting seasick, but I was equipped with the proper medication, which I'll talk about later, and all of the ferry rides were actually quite calm. Honey was our first stop in Crete. This was one of my favorite cities in all of Greece, from the cute, quaint alleyways of the city to the beautiful port with amazing, authentic restaurants. During our time in Crete, we went on a day trip to Falasarna Beach, a beautiful beach on the west side of the island about an hour away from Hania. After Hania, we hit Heraklion, another cute town and two hours east of Hania. This too had a beautiful port and the bluest water I'd seen yet. Sadly, we were only here for one day before departing to Santorini and we didn't get to see the Palace of Knossos, or what is known to be Europe's oldest city. I definitely recommend they add that into the tour, but other than that, Crete was amazing. Next up, Santorini. I had by far the highest expectations for this island, as its blue domed churches and white cliffside cityscapes seem to be all I see on Instagram and Pinterest. We stayed at a beautiful resort-like hotel which overlooked much of the city. Because the towns on Santorini are so high up, I had a slight case of vertigo, and because we had been on so many ferries, I also had land sickness. I would get dizzy occasionally, but the breathtaking views were worth the discomfort. There are two major towns to see in Santorini. Ia and Thera. Ia is a super high up, picturesque city where lots of locals and tourists alike gather to watch the sunset most nights. I highly recommend as it was one of the prettiest sunsets I'd ever seen. Thera is a more quaint local town full of more beautiful views, restaurants, and shopping. We also went wine tasting at a local winery in Santorini and if you like wine at all or the culture behind it, I highly recommend doing the same. After Santorini, we were off to Eos, my personal favorite island. Now, I can't tell if the island itself was my favorite or the place we were staying. We stayed at a resort right on the beach that had everything you could ever need from a giant pool, amazing restaurants, convenience stores, and water sports. <laughs> We also happened to be there during the Sweden Midsummer Party, which happens once a year and was one of the biggest pool slash beach parties I had ever been to. 
One of my favorite days on the whole trip was in Eos, where I went paddle boarding and inner tubing, and a lot of other people went snorkeling and scuba diving. The possibilities were endless. Next, we were off to Paros. Unfortunately, I didn't do much in Paros because I was feeling a little under the weather. The group did go on an all-day boat cruise around the island, though, where they saw the bluest lagoon and had an amazing time. Paros, unlike any other islands we'd seen yet, had a gorgeous little town right along the coast. I woke up for sunset one morning with a friend I'd made on the trip and actually got some incredible drone footage. Our last island, and probably my second favorite place, was Mykonos. This was another island I'd heard endless things about, from the nightlife to... Okay, mostly just the nightlife. We stayed at a gorgeous hotel overlooking the ocean and trekked into the city each night to experience some true Mykonos nightlife. One night while we were out, the whole city experienced a power blackout, which wasn't ideal, but was also really cool to see. Before we knew it, it was time to get on our last ferry of the trip and head back to Athens for our farewell dinner and last night in Greece. I couldn't believe I'd been walking these same streets only two weeks before. The trip was the perfect length as I was sad to leave all my new friends, but also happy and excited to get home. Now on to some packing tips. As a rule of thumb, I'd say pack your suitcase and then take out literally half of it. You are moving up and down stairs, on and off buses and ferries, so the least you can take, the better. Two weeks is not two months, and you can live without a lot of the extra clothes you think you need. I promise. I checked a medium-sized bag, but if I could do it over, I would just bring a carry-on. Here are my biggest packing tips. Number one, bring sandals and shoes that you don't mind trashing. You're walking so much you shouldn't bring your $200 designer sandals. They will get ruined. Number two, if you go in the summer, you don't need any jackets. Bring one comfy sweater or sweatshirt for lounging around, but that's it, it's way too hot. Number three, bring only one pair of long pants and maybe two pairs of shorts and just repeat the same shorts the whole trip. Number four, bring enough underwear for the whole trip. You can do laundry if you need, but no one really wanted to. Number five, leave extra room for souvenirs. Seriously, try. Number six, Bring all the medication you think you could possibly need. There are pharmacies, but it's tough sometimes navigating and communicating in a foreign country, so bring anything you could possibly need. Number seven, if you're a girl, bring two to three flowy dresses that you can dress up or down. They're breathable and you can sweat a lot and they'll still be really cute and comfortable. Fun facts I realized about Greece. Number one, it's hot AF in the summer. <laughs> Enough said. Number two, there are stray cats and dogs in almost every city. How has no one made a Cats of Greece Instagram page, honestly? Number three, after most meals, you're served a shot of Auza or Rocky. Sorry about my pronunciation. It's like authentic Greek tequila, if you will, which they claim is good for digestion. Number four, it's rude to not finish your food. But don't worry, sometimes they serve literally way too much and you just can't. Most places will give you a to-go bag if you need. Number five, it's rude to ask for the check before everyone's done eating. We learned this the hard way. Number six, they usually won't come to you with the check, you need to ask for it. Lots of places don't take cards, so be sure to take out some cash. Number eight, there is no Wi-Fi. I repeat, the Wi-Fi is terrible everywhere and a lot of hotels don't even have it. If you desperately need internet, buy a Wi-Fi hotspot from a local cell phone shop. I bought one from Cosmote, one of their local cell carriers, and it worked pretty well. Number nine, if you need to have cell service, get a travel pass. Most carriers have a $10 a day, full data and cell service type of package. Normally I'm okay with unplugging, and a lot of people did, but I had to work during this trip, so it was actually really nice to have. All right, you guys, that is my review on EF College Break's Ultimate Greek Islands Trip. It was the most incredible experience. I absolutely 100% would do it again. I really recommend this trip, as well as checking out all of their other trips. If you guys decide to book, be sure to leave a comment below with any questions or concerns, and I will be sure to address them. You can also follow me on Instagram to see some of my photos from Greece and DM me with your email addresses if you are interested in signing up so that I can connect you with a personal trip consultant. This video was by no means sponsored. This is absolutely my honest opinion. EF did send me on this trip for free. I would 100% do this trip again and I highly recommend. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!